All right. Well, good evening. Good evening. Village of Lincoln Heights Finance Committee meeting is now called to order. Roll call, Ms. Randolph. One second. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm ready now. Um, Councilwoman Laverne Mitchell. Present. Vice Mayor Jeannie Stinson. Present. Councilwoman Linda Childs Jeter. Present. Councilman Deron Daniels. Present. Councilwoman Tanya Key. Present. We have five who are present. We do have a quorum. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the mercy, blessing, and grace that you have given us. Lord, we ask that you watch over us this evening. We ask that you give us all the wherewithal and everything else that we need to make good decisions for the village of Lincoln Heights. And Father, as we do this meeting, we ask that you keep we ask that you keep Deacon James Mobley in your care. This we ask in your son's name. Amen. 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 So, Madam, Madam I do want to announce that um, our Reverend Mobley is in the is in hospice tonight. Oh, okay. So please keep his family in your prayers. Uh, please, please explain the connection that he has with uh, the village. Deacon Mobley, um, he he's a, a deacon at St. Simon's Episcopal Church and. He has been involved in the, the politics of the village for many, 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 many years. He's like a mentor to many of us. Um, Mr. Mobley has served as a mayor um, at least three terms, and he has also been um, the village manager. He's been um, a baseball coach. He's been very involved in the Democratic Party um, so the village owes a lot of a lot of gratitude uh, to Deacon Mobley uh, for what he's done over the years. Would anybody else like to add something? I, I can add that I've known him uh, a very, very long time, and uh, he's been uh, good to the community. He also is a member at uh, St. Simon. I believe, is that true? Yes. And uh, uh, I know his uh, his daughter who taught at Withrow, you know, so, and and her mother, so, or his wife. So, yeah, do keep them in your prayer, prayer. And, uh, and, and Mrs. Mobley as well. She is also in um, a nursing home. Huh? Okay. Yes. I didn't know. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, a motion is in order to accept the minutes of the previous meeting, February 16th. So moved. So, second. Any questions? Any questions? Hearing no questions, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. No opposition. Thank you. Um, so for old business, um, as you look through the minutes, is there anything that um, we need to um, be reminded of? Um, I think the only thing that um, I can think of or that was mentioned uh, basically um, in the report would be um, the overtime issue uh, that was brought up as um, well as the um, Lincoln Heights day budget. So Ms. Paldrew, um did we find out about the, the overtime? I think Ms. Stinson, you had a you had a question about the overtime, how we were doing it, if we had enough in the budget. Was that what the issue was? So if the question is, do we have sufficient funding to pay all time? Yes, um, to pay um, double time. 
Yes, we did. So, the, so the overtime pay is that, double time. Yes. Is that and you can confirm that, Miss Poe, please. For the uh, no, it wouldn't be double time. It would just be regular overtime. Overtime. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so the, so the amount that's in the budget covers the double overtime as well. Then you know what I'm saying? Is yes. that okay? Mm -hmm. Miss Madam Vice Chair, Chair. Oh. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Okay. I, I, I guess this is my first time hearing double overtime. What what would constitute double overtime? Just as a point of reference to understand that. If is they that, actually go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Pope. If they actually worked on the holiday and you had an event on the holiday the actual holiday. So they would get paid their holiday pay in plus time and a half. So that would add up to be double time. So Madam Chair. Go ahead. So are we are we referencing a particular day that is it are we talking about a particular period or are we talking about in general? So in I know general. we have one holiday when I think it snowed. Is that the one we're referencing? Okay, I thought she was talking about the um, overtime for the seventy uh, fifth. Oh no! Oh, okay, okay. I was telling <laughs> you. Okay. The overtime I think 75th. was in general. Oh, okay. okay. You know, yeah. not not for the seventy fifth, but the overtime question that I believe was just in general. Right. You know, so the, the, the amount that's there, does that would cover um, anything for any special events, okay. the double overtime, the time and a half? Is that does that cover it? Yes. Miss Key, did you have a N no ma'am? I I, okay. I was confused and I couldn't quite remember the last meeting when we were discussing it. And um, I was just trying to understand. What we're what we're saying. I thought I remember during budget time we talked. We added. We knew we were going to have certain events, so we added more into that right. fund for overtime. I thought we were talking about something specific. That's why oh, I was no. questioning. Okay. okay, I'm good. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so next then we'll uh, go to the Lincoln Heights Day um, Festival budget. Everyone has that. I don't know who all it was sent to. I should have been sent to the um, entire committee, Ms. Paldrill, um, uh, Ms. Um, Ms. Pope. I sent a copy to Ms. Pope. She hadn't gotten one. So I assume everybody got one. Everybody get one? Um, Ms. Key, what time do you send it out? About 3 or 3.30, something like that? It was about it was about four o'clock, and let me confirm because I don't know. Um, it was a quick send out, so if if everybody didn't get it, I'll be happy to resend it. Is that I got, I got it. I got it because it was beautiful. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Daniels, I thought I had you on the list. I'll be oh, happy to resend oh, oh. it. No, Madam Chair, I was just going to just re 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 reread the name. I think they was going to do the same thing you were going to do, Madam Key. I just had it happen up on my phone. So. Okay, would you would you do that for me? Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. So the, the email, obviously, uh, Ms. Key, Ms. Vice Mayor, Ms. Stinson, uh, Ms. Laverne, Ms. Linda Child G to myself, and it was CC to Ms. Patrick. Okay, so and then I sent one to um Ms. to Ms. Pope, Pope so we need to send one to Ms. Baber. Ms. Make Baber. sure Ms. Baber. Okay, sorry about that, Ms. Baber. Okay, so as we look over- Why don't we just send one to everybody, the mayor? Can you pull it up? Can we share that document? It's a nice document. If I get, um, I have to have be co co host. Get okay. Tanya Key. Pavel so I can I can host. go I can go to uh, security and and give her the opportunity. Is that where I go, uh, Vice Mayor? I'm not for sure. sure. Uh, Ms. Key, Councilwoman, I I ICRC has to do it. He gave me the security piece to do it, I think. Okay. 
to share the screen, I guess. Uh, but anyway, while I'm trying to figure that out, uh, Mr. Mr. Jump. So Mr. it looks like they have Mr. Daniels as co-host. So you got to take him off as co-host because I think you can only have two co-hosts on with the host. So if he takes Mr. Daniels off and then give me. Tanya Key. Not. Who would like permission? Tanya Key. Thank you. Yeah, you could rule. Yeah, thank you. You are all set. Thank you, sir. All right. Back to Zoom. Is the screen visible? Mm hmm. Yes. Okay. So I did forward that to Ms. Pope, the mayor, and Ms. Baber. Was that all I missed? Ms. Randolph. Okay, I'll get you. Oh, what about, or did you say, did you get the mayor? Yes. Oh, okay. So I'll send it to Ms. Ms. Uh, Randolph as well. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so um, <clears throat> as we, as you over, as you take a look at the uh, the budget, um, it is, um, it has just the estimated expenses, but I think we, we need to have the estimated uh, revenues as well. And then after the event, you need to add the, um, the actual revenue. And, and so the question for me becomes, I and mean, then we'll just, and we'll go back over each one that the budget is 30,000, but you all are showing estimated um, expenses of um, about close to 67,000. So, so Madam Chair? Yes. And just to kind of set it up, um, me and Vice Mayor had a meeting to kind of go over all the numbers. So just kind of, can I just frame it right quick so that the whole okay. committee would know what they're looking Please. at. And so we, we do have the, um, the estimated incomes. Um, we just didn't share it for this purpose because we were just looking at um, bringing in all the thoughts, all the ideas, all the things that the committee wanted to do, putting a number to it. And so that was the purpose of this particular showcase is to show the numbers. I can definitely show the income um, because we do have a potential estimated income, but we don't know how many sponsors are going to sponsor. So we only have um, the $30,000 that has been budgeted that we've talked about before. We have a couple of things that um, Vice Mayor has identified of, as items that we know that we can sell, promotional items. And so we do have those costs and we do have that potential income, but it's still not gonna cover what you see here. So if we can take for this meeting to talk about these items, and then at our next meeting, we'll have a, a, a better picture of what the potential income coming in could be. Is that is that okay? Yeah, we, we can start there. And I guess that as we go through it, um, I think a couple of things that have to be explained. And even though this is estimated um, under your categories, there should be um, what that category consists of. For instance, if we look at the, um, the activities, mm -hmm. you have concert. Okay, so the concert is $20,000, but does that include, what, what does that include? Does that include um, the, the performance or all the performers will be paid a total of 20,000? How many of those performers, you know, pretty much... Oh. So at this Explaining point, each of those. Right. So at this point, I'll I'll defer now to um to Vice Mayor. Oh, okay. Vice Mayor. <laughs> okay. We do we do have some things. This is just a snippet for this meeting, but we do have everything itemized, Ms. Mitchell. Uh, okay. thank you for making that bigger because I could not see it. Okay. We have um <laughs> like everything that for the concert. We have the stage, the artists, um, the the tents, we have everything itemized. Everything is is itemized. I don't, I'm not for sure what you're asking. That 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 is what I'm asking. Yes, so, I do have an itemized list for most of these things here. Okay, and so we we won't get that one till 
till April. I can send you oh, my okay. itemized um, before April, Ms. Mitchell. Yeah, we can have it before April. I mean, Madam Chair, I'm sorry. We can have it before April just for, like I said, we just didn't have it ready to present, but we'll be happy to plug it in. We I just got some numbers today. So all I did okay. was plug in the final cost, but it, it did come itemized and I just wasn't able to add the itemized portion into the full report. Okay, so um, I have a question regarding the miscellaneous. So the fashion show was going to cost us $9,500. How, how, I mean. That's the estimate that we've received. Thank right, you. but I mean, what what is that for the place? Are we renting a, a place or? I, I, I'm just trying to understand. I, I can't see us spending $9,500 for a fashion show for people to wear clothes, to show their clothing uh, or a store's clothing. Okay. Um, there are a few things that I wasn't for sure on uh, how it was broken down. Uh, mm -hmm. I was going to ask those questions at our next meeting. The I, I, I It's a few things that we have numbers for that I wasn't in charge of, so I don't have that breakdown. Um, okay. And the questions that I had, I wasn't going to waste the time in your meeting to do. I was just going to ask those questions in the Lincoln Heights Day meeting to get clarity so I could bring back to you. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just, um, I, I think $66,000 is, um, is a big number. Um, for us, because right now it looks like this, these are the expenses that we would have, and so um, I guess my next question would be: I mean, I, and this when you say we, be, what do you mean, the village? Yeah. Okay. Why because do you think that the village is going to have this cost if we're trying? If everything we're trying to do, we're trying to get sponsors for, and if it's not sponsored, then it can't happen if we don't have the money correct right but see but that the, to me the budget doesn't say that so and this is this is the lincoln heights day festival expenses so that says to me this is what the village would be expending now mm -mm. even if our sponsors were to pay something right they mm -hmm. are they going to pay for it themselves or do they give that money to us to pay towards the sixty six thousand? This is my. This is how I thought that it was supposed to go. That okay. um, we our brochure that is being created for us is broken down specifically for different events. For example, um, if you want to sponsor the concert, this is how much the concert costs. Bam, do it like that. If you want to sponsor the ride, this is how much the ride costs. I wish I could show you the brochure, but it's not completed yet. And that mm -hmm. might help you to understand, Ms. Mitchell, where that $30,000 that's in there for Lincoln Heights Day, that, mm -hmm. um, I'm not looking at that to spend. I'm looking to get the 66,000 from sponsors. Now, if we need to use the $30,000, okay. Cause it's gonna be certain things like, for example, maybe um, the rides, you gotta put a deposit down. The, the concert, it needs a deposit. Some of the things that's used for the car show or the fashion show or whatever, they may need a deposit. However, we're not trying to spend any of that $30,000 until we get some money in. If that makes, does that make sense? Am I making yeah, that, sense? To run? That makes sense, which that makes sense. Um, I'm not really looking but, at that $30,000. Now that $30,000, it would, we're not so, trying to use it for our events that we came up with. That's something we know we need booths. You understand what I'm saying? You know we need tents. I'm not asking a sponsor to sponsor booths and tents. I'm asking them okay. to sponsor a certain event. So so basically we we should, are probably looking at two budgets. One for the village for the for the thirty thousand dollars that has been appropriated, and then one in which we are asking the sponsors. What, what the cost that we're looking for the sponsors to cover. So I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no to that because once money start coming in, I'm trying to see how I can explain this. Um, hmm. Well, when money starts coming in, even from the sponsors, it will still have to go to the Lincoln Heights Day Festival pot. 
and then whatever they're sponsoring, let's say they want to sponsor, um, you have on here the banner. Let's say somebody wants to sponsor the banners. They say, okay, well, I'm going to send you um, $2,500 for the banners. It comes That's not a good them. example because I think the Lincoln Heights ought to pay for the banners. Well, whoever, pay, okay, so if whatever the, um, let's say the advertisement, someone says I'm going to pay for your advertisement. Okay, now, will they send the $1,500 to wherever the different places the advertisement goes, or mm -hmm. they're sending the $1,500 to the village for the village to mm -hmm. pay whatever advertising venue you use. Exactly. So the sponsor should be sending their sponsorship funds to the village, and uh, uh, Ms. Pope, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, and it's posted to the Lincoln Heights Day Festival Fund, and it's expended from that for that reason. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ms. Pope? Yes, the, the way we tracked it when we had the uh, Lincoln Hikes Day Festival, I, I want to say in 16, is that um, there is a category for uh, Lincoln Hikes Day donations. So it was posted against any kind of donations that we received, sponsorships, donations. We, um, we posted it to that account number, but it all, you're correct. It all came under the Lincoln Hikes Day Festival Fund. It was all tracked under that fund. Any expenses, any donations that we received. Are you asking that we do two different funds to uh, track the $30,000 or what, Ms. Mitchell? I'm trying to see what no, you- No, it, it all, even with the third, let's, let's say you get $60,000 in sponsorship funds or whatever, even if just mm -hmm. donations. Um, so actually that 60,000 is going to be posted along with the 30,000. So now we've got 90,000. Mm -hmm. And then whatever those expenses are, still comes out of that fund because you have to track it. You have to mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. when the sponsors send their money, it all goes to the Lincoln Heights Day Fund and is expended from that. Well, we're going to have to have subcategories or whatever you all call it anyhow, because if I send a check in for $15,000 and I say I want it to go towards the car show, that's $15,000 towards the car show. Right. And, and somebody so might just send in a check for five thousand dollars and just say put it wherever there's a right. need right that's why on, on you know even with with your budget like you have um under concert um you may have other things than just the performers that go under concert mm -hmm. maybe that tw we do. Uh, twenty thousand dollars right so that's where your subcategory would go you say performers maybe that's twelve thousand dollars um, maybe it's the, um, I know you have stage, but I don't see the sound. So maybe $4,000 of that $20,000 goes to the sound, the equipment. And so that will be shown on your budget item as well, because that's the subject, that's the, um, the item that comes under the concert that's being expended. But if you have, if we have a, a stage and we're using that stage for more than just the concert, how do, how do you use think we should do that well your stage you know that you're gonna your stage the stage is just one cost regardless because it's still mm -hmm. gonna be it's gonna mm -hmm. be staying there you're gonna use it every mm -hmm. week let's say so mm -hmm. i don't you know if the stage is going to cost three hundred dollars per time we use it or for the days that we have it mm -hmm. but then that's what that's twelve hundred dollars and so it'll be just costed out like that so the stage, regardless of how you use the stage, the stage is just going to have one cost to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ms. Key, did you? Madam Chair. Go ahead, uh, Ms. G. Well, I was going to say, this is just a snapshot of what's going on. And uh, they're going to develop this more as they find out what their needs or wants are. So we've got to give it some time in order for it to mature and be the document that you want to see. This is one of the beginning stages of this. And you did ask for uh, an estimated budget of what was going to happen. And this does not include the $30,000. And you may want to see that up there as seed money and $60,000 as, as expected income coming in or donations coming in. And so that you can balance this out, but they're not at that point. They're just uh, looking at what the needs are 
and placing an estimated value to it. So if you give them a little time, then they can come up with the other. I don't think we need to spend the rest of the evening on this. That is, uh, in my opinion, only and uh, 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 give them opportunity to uh, make this stronger. Yes, ma'am. Because Ms. Mitchell, some of these things, like for example, um, the fashion show, the car show, the boxing, all of these different things came from different people. And some of these people need one, the same thing. So the cost is in here, but it's in there four times. We haven't broken it down into, okay, everybody needs a stage or everybody needs a mic. So we could take off probably a thousand dollars because we already have that one stage or that one mic. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. We haven't had our next meeting after this budget to break the cost down with the way everybody has it itemized. Do you understand okay. what I'm saying? Like the right. car show, they might need the same thing that the fashion show need, although it's so it'll all that sixty six thousand okay. might it might go down, but it also mm -hmm. might it, it could change. Okay. Vice so, Mayor Miss Mitchell, I didn't finish what I was saying. Oh, I are you, you, you going to do t-shirts? Yes, ma'am. And that's another cost that we haven't put it's in there yet. That, that's the one that we can make some money off of. That's that last piece that uh, me and Miss Key did not get to. Okay. Thank you. Now I'm done. So um, I, was in, I would just suggest that um, you and Miss Key give with, um, with Miss Pope to make sure that we see all the different categories and how we need to look at it in its totality the next time. And, um, you know, uh, the sooner you get a, a letter together, then all of council people can use that letter. I'm waiting on a letter. So the letter can, for what? If I have some individuals who want to donate. Oh, you're I mean, talking about a donation letter. Okay. I didn't know yeah. what kind of letter you meant. Right. Right, so um, so that we can begin to get a full look at what we're trying to do. And we also need to understand, um, I guess what the process is, making sure that we tell them to make it out to Lincoln Heights State Festival, Lincoln Heights, you know. So whatever, yeah. Ms. Pope, you need to, to add to that to make sure we, we're tracking it the best way would be helpful if you let them know. Let okay. us all know how we need to do that. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Does that letter need to come uh, to you before uh, going out? No, the letter uh, the letter needs to be, um, you know, signed just, by the mayor or Ms. Powder. I'm asking for a letter to give to the people that I've already I, talked to. It so should come from Ms. Powder. That should be checked by Ms. Powder. Okay. We have a very beautiful brochure that can go out to everybody. Yeah. And I, okay. I'm going and to so, encourage that beautiful brochure. And is it the brochure, um, is that part of the cost or is that something that we're doing in-house? That is something that is already being taken care of by the village because it's all encompassed with something else village-wise. It's somebody that's working on things for the village and she was able to do okay. this brochure for us. So okay. it's no so, cost to okay. Lincoln Heights days yet. Okay. Miss Key, I saw you um, quite a while ago start to say something. Madam Chair, I was just going to reiterate that, you know, we're, we're giving you an estimate as you requested to the committee. Um, we do still have a lot of things to plug in and we do have the um, information that you are requesting. We just don't have it available in the presentation form at this time. Okay. We will get that information out um, to everyone who is interested. And um, Vice Mayor is going to be going through those documents with a fine tooth comb, adjusting, as she said. I just wanted to reiterate that, adjust it, as she said. Um, and keep in mind, it is a process. This is a fluid document. As you all know, it will change. It continues to change. And then we will have a final report after the event, after we're able to reconcile all receipts. Um, so that information will be there. Just wanted to reiterate that. That's all I was wanting to say. Thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair. Yes. 
Uh, I love your questions that you asked. I'm going to, um, if you could come to the next meeting so that your questions could be asked within the whole committee, that way that not just myself and the people that are on here to, right now could hear, but the committee needs to know that um, these questions and concerns as well. Okay, I, I will try to do that. All right, thank you so much. And when's the next meeting? April 6th. It's always the first Tuesday. First Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of, and six? Yeah. Six? Mm -hmm. Six o'clock? Okay, yeah. I'll try. I, I do have a commitment at that time, but I will try to come on at some point. All righty. <clears throat> Ms. Powell, do you have anything? Um, as it pertains to um, Lincoln Heights Bay, uh, no, I will I will be working with them as well alongside them to review the budget as well. Um, I just got it just like everybody else got it. And uh, okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're working together on that. All righty, thank you. All right, um, let's move on to the um, finance report. So the finance report for February first. Miss Pope, one moment. Just okay. one moment. Let me let me go get mine because <laughs> I just picked it up. Okay. Hello, Mayor. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hey, Mayor. Hey, Mayor. We Sorry, are guys. on. Sorry, I missed y'all. I went to get my shot. <laughs> They called me, so I had to rush. So yay for me. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, we we are on the uh, was, finance report, uh, Mayor. That was that telephone call I had to disappear on. Okay, the fund reconciliation report, our um, beginning balance for February first was one million seven hundred three thousand. $713.39. Um, I went through and made some corrections to the report. Uh, I sent it back out to you guys around 2.30 today. So hopefully you have the corrected version. Um, it has a lot of highlight on it. So you'll, so we'll, uh, we can see the questions that needed to be answered. Um, the revenue for February 20th, I mean, February 2021 was $86,301.13. This is a 3% increase over revenues for the same period in February of 2020 of $84,063.08. Of that 84000 um our ACHs, automatic clearing houses deposits um, that we received in February totaled fifty-four thousand two hundred and twenty dollars and sixty-nine cents. As reported before, and it's always constant, our ACH receipts are received from Ohio Business Gateway. Those are tax payment arrangements. Um, State of Ohio, we receive gas excise tax permissive tax and local state tax, um, Greater Cincinnati Waterworks deposits and Hamilton County Treasurer um, for local government fund taxes and the motor vehicle fund. The Ms. Tax Let me stop you for one moment. Okay. Does everybody have a corrected copy? I don't know, because I'm looking for the amount she's talking about. Can we pull it up? Okay, well, yeah, the amount she said is in the old one, but what she did based on the um, questions and concerns that I have. So that's why I'm asking if you don't have it. She did, she, it was sent out. So you do you do have it, but if you weren't able to print it out or you, you're not showing showing it on your document, on your screen, um, I guess we can um, <clears throat> have ICRC give... Um, sharing responsibility to uh to miss pope so it can be shared madam chair yeah, do you have it miss k oh, 
Oh, I don't have it in digital form, or I probably do, but I, I'm looking at it in the paper form. I just wanted to make sure it, the one we're reading is the one with the highlights. Yes, yes that's the one. Oh, the the highlight yellow on the paper is the okay. latest one that I sent you guys. Okay, thank you. Ms. Charles Jeter, I sent it to both of your emails. Okay, the printed so copy. I'm saying, but if we can share it the so that... The printed copy. Can, you want me to share it, Madam Chair? Yes, because we have copy. other people on the, um, you know, we have residents so everyone can see it. All right, let me see if I can pull it up. We sent it to 247, Ms. Key. I'm looking, I don't have... It's probably going to be uh, Ms. Mitchell first. I'm looking for emails from you. Okay, here we go. I just had to reset it right quick. Okay. All right, let me go back to sharing. Is this the one, Ms. Pope? Yes, it is. Okay. So we're right, right at that uh, paragraph, the tax comparison. Okay, got it. Okay, so um, Ms. Mitchell asked me to explain the 16.3% uh, decrease in total tax collections. I put an explanation down after I was talking to Ms. Peterson, who is on the Zoom call. So if we have any additional questions, she can answer those questions for you guys. Um, the financial impact from the global pandemic of 2020 is starting to show in the 2021 tax collections. So from there, I broke it down on the percentage difference for the residents. The residential filing is down 50%, which the dollar amount equals $1,614.50. The um, business collections are down 9%, and that's only $51. The withholding earnings collection is down 14% which is a dollar amount of $5,588.88. That total is the um, $7,254.37. And that is the difference between total income collections for from 2021 to verse 2020. So uh, in 2020, we collected $44,244.38. For total income. And this year we've collected for the month of February $36,990.01. Anybody have any questions on that? Okay. So our expense breakdown. Okay. Um, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Powell. Make a comment, just a quick comment. Um, so we all we we see now some deterioration in the revenue. So it, we're going to have to start to have conversations around um, our finances and save and savings. Um, we do there is stimulus coming, but that doesn't mean we need to go crazy with it. So I'm just putting that out there as a comment. You all see this. So we're going to have to tighten our belts. Okay. Just yes, ma'am. And then it is assumed, uh, I neglected to say, it is assumed that more people filed unemployment, um, which is not taxable in the local government sector. So, Ms. Uh, Peterson, did you want to make a comment? No, I've seen her up there. No, I, I was just here for questions. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Good evening. Okay, on uh, going down to the expense portion of the um, report, Ms. Um, Mitchell wanted me to explain further explain the thirty percent uh, increase in spending, and that's an increase in spending. So when I uh, pulled up last year's report, we didn't make a um, payment to Donalyn and Donalyn in February. Also our Hamilton County Sheriff's 
um, cost per month is a little bit higher. It's a cost increased by $1,325.24. Um, the 11 and 4 payment, it was in the um, total encumbrance was for 64000 that was encumbered uh, against 2020 um, uh, expenditures, but we paid for one car because one car was ready before the end of 2020. And then we made the payment for the second car in 2021. So that's why it's a $32,000 payment difference, which is about actually about 17% of that 30% uh, increase in payments. And then we made um, a payment to Ohio Public Works, which we made two payments and they're on the next page for our, for Dixie Court and then for Leggett. If you guys recall, all of the payments to OPWC were suspended for 2020. So we just have to make them in 2021. Ms. So Pope, I have I mean. a question regarding um, the Donnellan and Donnellan. Um, there was no payment in February, I means we did not, not that there wasn't a charge, we just paid double in March. We either paid double in March or double in January, or, you know, it could be in a billing. Um, I'll have to look that up and see when he they actually billed us. But okay. No payment was made in February of 2020. And, and the reason for my asking that question to begin with, because I wanted to actually know how much of that was extraordinary fees. So in the future, um, you know, if it's a big amount, if there has been some extraordinary fees in the um, solicitor's payment, if you would let us know what that, what that amount was. Yeah, that's on the next page, because you did ask me to break that down, and I did break it down for you. So... On the next page, the um, total checks that was written and uh, come back down, Ms. Key. Come back down. We're actually on page two. There we are, right there. Um, total checks that were written for the month of February 2021 was $153,460.99. Here's the detail that you asked for, Ms. Mitchell, the Donnellan and Donnellan check. Um, previously, um, last month, we said we were going to list any checks that were over $5,000. So Donnellan and Donnellan was one of the ones that was over $5,000. And that $8,465.41, it breaks down. His monthly fee was $4,416. The mayor's court, um, their solicitor, or the uh, legal magistrate, ma not the magistrate, the other one. Oh, you mean the prosecutor? Prosecutor. Uh, her fee was $500. And then extraordinary fees was $3,548.75. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes, ma'am. Uh, was that, is that for two months? No, it's just for one month. Just one month. Okay. And then you have the Hamilton County Sheriff's um, payment on there, the contract for $68,393.92. You have check number 49512, Lebanon Ford. It was for $32,003 for the new police vehicle. And then the Ohio Public Works, it was for $6,455.30. And it breaks down to the Dixie Court payment of $1,716.09. And then the Leggett uh, Street payment for $4,739.21. And then So also we're going to list the ACH withdrawals. Um, it, um, uh, Ms. Pope. Yes. How much longer do we have on the Dixie Court? Uh, Dixie Court. I have to look up. Look it up. It okay. was a twenty-year loan. Oh, okay. 
and it was for uh, the original amount was 66,000, a little over 66, and it was for 20 years. I believe it started in 16 or 15. Um, the ACH withdrawals was $39,796.35. And those were for ADP processing fees that amounted to $1,410.78. Um, U.S. Bank's monthly service fee, uh, $573.54. Uh, payroll dated 2-4-21 was $15,801.95. Payroll dated 2-18-21 was $14,552.19. Um, deluxe laser checks, um, they were for laser checks and deposit slips and that was $715.12. So our ending bank balance at February 28th 2021 was $1,620,074.23. Outstanding checks total $156,973.75. And our reconciled bank balance at February 28th is $1,463,000. Any questions? <coughs> okay, um, our audit updates, I am currently still making corrections to the system and I will be, um, I'll be able to report to you pretty soon on when they're gonna resume the, um, the audit. Ms. Mitchell also wanted me to um, um, correct the time budget for the tax, I'm sorry, the timeline for the tax budget 22. Um, as you all know, most of you know, I think everybody knows that the tax budget is due by July, it has to be passed by July 15th of every year. And, and it has to be submitted to Hamilton County Auditor's Office by July 20th. Uh, at one of the requirements is a public hearing must be held prior to passage. So that's usually done on the same day of the council meeting in which we're going to pass the legislation for the tax budget. And it also, we have to put a legal ad in the paper for 10 days, not for 10 days, but 10 days prior to the public hearing. So um, she wanted me to give you some specific dates. So um, I, uh, April 19th, um, I'll present the tax budget 2020, 2022 to you guys at the finance meeting. We'll review that tax budget. On May 17th, the finance meeting will uh, review it for, and I would have made any corrections that you guys say we need to correct. June 28th, I'll place the ad in the uh, paper that'll be 10 days prior to July 12th. July 12th is the last council meeting before July 15th. So we have to pass, the budget has to be passed prior to or by July 15th. So the last meeting is July 12th. We'll have a um, public hearing at the Committee of the Whole. It, it's usually only like 15 minutes. And then um, July 12th, legislation will be passed that evening. On page three, I changed some verbiage there for um, to make it say outstanding checks instead of non-cleared checks, because they are actually outstanding. So, um, uh, on, uh, for, you can go ahead and go down, Mrs. Key. On 326, that highlight, Miss um, Mitchell wanted me to explain what that was. 
and it was for safety uniforms for Airmark, $2,726.30. Um, PPE supplies of $325.40. Those were for gloves. Um, another section of PPE supplies was $1,259 for non-contact thermometers. We do have those for the community. If anybody knows anybody who needs uh, one of those non-contact thermometers, you can, um, we have ours posted to the plexiglass so you can mount it to a wall and as people coming in your building or your house, they can just, you know, put their forehead up there and it'll, it'll read their temperatures. All of that was out of the HB 481 CARES Act um, fund. So those charges were posted to the, uh, to that. The Airmark safety uniform, we were allowed to order those um, because the safety, part, uh, the service department is considered safety personnel. So we could charge their uniforms to the HB CARES Act fund. Madam Chair. Oh, oh, go ahead, Ms. King. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just going back to the thermometer uh, statement that you made, Ms. Pope. Are you saying yes. that we have extras that we can perhaps give out to like an organization like St. Monica's or yes. a church? Yes. How many extras are available? Do you know? Um, we ordered pretty many. Um, I want to say we ordered the thermometers. We ordered about 50 of them. Okay. We ordered 50 of them, so. So, so Ms. Pope, are you finished, Ms. K? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm finished. So Ms. Pope, you mentioned for the house. I, I think we need to have clarification. People can't come down. If you, only, you have 50, so they're not to be owned or to be you just borrowed. How are we doing that so that okay, you don't have me, a run uh, on folks saying, me, I want one for my house? Let me make a correction. We, we okay. ordered two different types of we got we have the handheld thermometers that you point to somebody's head and um those are for all the residents we or we ordered about 50 of those for whoever may need it might be a daycare center it might be uh, saint monica's you know even our corner they might want to check somebody's temperature before they come into their establishment so we ordered about 50 uh, Ms. Peterson, if you can help me remember, it was either 50 or 100 we ordered those. And then we are also ordered um, the ones that you can mount to the wall, but we only ordered like six of those. We actually ordered them for this building, but the police department and the uh, fire department are not there. So we have about four extra, four or five, if someone okay. wanted them for their church or something like that. Okay, and is there any stipulation, paperwork that needs to be filled out for these? No, and actually what we're going to do, um, Ms. Valerie, uh, you know, she comes down here and, and volunteers on Friday. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually put together um, a bunch of PPE bags so the residents can come out, come down and get, you know, gloves, uh, uh, mask thermometers, you know, whatever they may need that we have. We have some wipes, we have some sanit sanita uh, sanitizer stuff, but, you know, okay. the thing. we're just going to put those bags together to get that out to the residents. Okay, I, I just want to remind those residents who are tuning in uh, to make sure you mute yourself so we don't, we're having a hard time hearing um, each other when there's extra noise in the background. Thank you. Continue, Ms. Pope. Okay, and so uh, you questioned Fund 331, our infrastructure levy, and what was paid from that, and that is the two OPWC payments, Dixie Court and Leggett. And is the, um, the OPWP payments, how often are those made? OPWC payments, and they're biannual, so they're made twice a year. Okay, so out of that, so we have another um, eleven thousand dollars to do, to go out of the uh, infrastructure fund. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, on page four, 
when you see this big highlighted section, a duplicate check number within the check range. So when I'm doing my checks, when I'm processing my checks, uh, the, my system asked me what check number. My check number, let's say it was 14901. If that check number has already been used, but it's in my range, my system would tell me you have a duplicate check. So the printers gave me a batch that had I had duplicate numbers on there. So my starting, so it was within that range. Like I had to go through all of them to get the next check number. So that it would allow me to use. Um, further down the page, the Delodge, Delodge Landing Financial, that's copier payments. And I didn't put it on your first report, but it's copier payments. Okay, on page question. five. Ms. Paul, go back to uh, page four. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I guess uh, this is uh, basically for the mayor. So for um, for our magistrate, is that eight twenty five a month? Was she given a raise or no? Her check was actually um, lost in the mail. She said she never received it. So I put her her uh, lost amount, which was five fifty, on there. And then she only had one court in February because it was the snow, so it was mm -hmm. two seventy five. So that's her eight eight. That's how hers was eight fifty that month. Okay. Thank you. Or eight is what eight eight twenty eight uh, eight twenty five five. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I asked her, can we, you know, is there a way that we can just, de you know, deposit in her account because if we don't have it ready on that day, then oh. that way we won't take a chance on it getting lost in the mail. So is it going to be a direct deposit? She said she's going to figure out how she can do that. She told me she had to talk to her secretary. <laughs> so we'll see if we can do that. You know, I'm just saying I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Okay. Somebody else we know needs to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on page five, um, you wanted me to explain TPA. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, that's, you know, you see this all the time and you forget that people don't see what you see. So that right. is third party administrator payment. That's what the TPA stands for, third party administrator. Um, U.S. Bank, you check number M10202 U.S. Bank. The check came back to us uh, with insufficient funds, and that's the amount of the insufficient fund, the check amount. It wasn't a charge. It's just the amount of the check. Okay. And the second U.S. Bank, M1206, um, it's going to be uh, our monthly service fee, our analysis fee for, for the bank. Now, um, the ACH withdrawals, when you see that M in front of that, that is an ACH in, in my system, it's a memo expense. And so the way it's set up, it's M1. So one would be for the year 21. And then um, it's 02, the month, and then the first one that I issued. So it would be 0201. So the system only gives me six or seven numbers that I can put in there. So it's going to be the uh, M for the memo. The next number is going to be the year and then the month and then the number of the memo. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I, I just have a quick question just pertaining to the check numbers. Um, since we had that big issue with the misprint, um, I'm noticing 49, 491, and 492 aren't registered. Is that because I don't want to make any assumptions? What would be the reason for them not registering um, as your next check to write? It's on page four in the middle, right after all the highlighted yellows. 
There is no 91. There is yeah, no 91. I'll have to see 91 and 92 and see why it's not on here. Right. Normally, that would be if you don't see one on here, um, it would be, uh, say, for instance, it would be Duke Energy and the amount of invoices that I have. It might carry over to the next check. So that for 494901 may be um, uh, additional check that just list all of the uh, invoice numbers. So it would be a non-issued check, but it's still part of check number 49493. So, so we okay. only have so much space to print. So it'll just drop down until it gets to the point where it can put the total on there. Got it. So I'm thinking that just for continuity's sake, if we have these records like this, that maybe um, we should put something in the, even if it's in a narrative, identifying that that may have happened or whatever may have happened. Okay. Or even if you miswrite a check and you had to void a check, normally I would see, I think you would actually put voided. I think yeah. I remember seeing that. Um, just for continuity's sake, just as a matter of detail. Um, something okay. to that record. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Good suggestion. Okay. Um, so that what I did with this one on the final page, page five, I actually broke it up, broke it down to how many the total amount of checks written amounted to $153,460.99, and the ACH withdrawals was $39,796.35 for a total uh, amount of $193,257.34. And that would be the end of my report. Any questions? Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I want to thank you for um, uh, asking for those, the highlighted part in yellow. That that helped me a lot today. Quite thank welcome. you, Ms. Pope and Ms. Uh, Mitchell. Thank you, Ms. Vice Mayor. All right, if there is... Um, no further questions. We need um, a motion uh, to recommend to council that they accept the February monthly report. Make a so, motion. So moved. Second. <laughs> Got it, Miss um, Randolph. Okay. Any questions on the motion? Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposition? All right, we uh, recommendation is to take it before council for full, full approval. Thank you. All right, so House Bill 157. So that is, um, they've had um, two hearings on it. And so I believe that is why, um, Ms. Pope, you have Ms. Stevenson here to talk about 157. Um, if you remember, I think it was, I want to say, I don't know, was it Senate Bill 5? When they did all the tax changes, one of the tax changes was that if someone worked in your community for a certain amount of time, after that amount of time, then you can begin to, to um, charge taxes. So that particular bill really hurt um, municipalities, um, especially small ones. And so somewhat of what they're asking uh, them to do now in um, the era of COVID um, is to repeal one of those um, tax bills that becomes 
if you're working from home and not the community in which your company is located, what happens to the taxes? So if somebody is working from home um, and they live in Price Hill, but their company is here, we may not get that money that we normally would get. So it's very confusing. So I'm hoping that um, uh, Ms. Stevenson can um, kind of clear that up for us. I think it looked like she might have logged out. I don't see Ms. Peterson. Oh, really? Well, it's on you, Ms. Pope. Okay, well, um, <laughs> I think me and Ms. Paldrill will bounce back and forth off of this. Okay. One. Because we were talking about it and what I had suggested that uh, Ms. Uh, Peterson did, does, or do was to pull a report that shows our top uh, 10 businesses and how that would affect us if, uh, I think she's getting ready to log back in, I told her, uh, how it would affect us if, if that bill were to pass. So, um, uh, when she printed that report, we were looking at some of the businesses and we kind of cut it down pretty close to maybe just a couple that we may need to worry about. And that is the, uh, it's a business over here, AG, SG, AG, the one is right off the highway. The, they're the engineers that do the, uh, the work for GE. Now if they're at okay. home and their taxes are going to their home base, that could affect us. To and where they live? Yeah, where they live where they live at. And that is also the company where we got that big um, payment from last year. So that could affect us as well. And that's a high yeah. salary. Yeah, th those are high salary. Some of the other ones, it, she actually printed 25 businesses and um, um, more than 10 of them were actually below $10,000 as far as earnings tax that we received from annually. So it was um, three or four, well, it was maybe five that were above 50,000. Do you remember Ms. Baldrew? Oh, I, I, I don't remember the exact number, but I yeah. know the, the dollar, I'm not sure about the dollar amount. Yeah. Um, so. Go ahead. I think Lincoln Heights actually was the our number one. And um, so we know that they're not going to Lincoln Heights connection. There she is. The, Lincoln Heights about the healthcare connection, the, the health healthcare center. connection was actually like our number one. So um, we know I think we're in good standings with them. But uh, some of the other companies that we were worried about again was the uh, the engineers and D. What was the other companies that we were worried about? Um, as, did you say AG? Yeah, the engineers. Yeah, yeah, that that was one of the main ones I was concerned about. What about Princeton with the teachers working from home? Uh, I've not been able to get that solidified that you have that many teachers working from home. So there's a couple of them. Like I said, the top 10 didn't hold a lot. Most of them were manufacturing. So the main one we was concerned about was the engineering company. And then I think there's another company that does um, business, but he wasn't in the top 10. So Ms. Stevens, what, how many oh. hours do they have to work before, you know, if, if the company is in Indiana and, and they send someone to Lincoln Heights to work, how many hours do they work before we can get there to get that earnings tax? I think it's 20 hours consistently. Consistently meaning? In a row, over okay. a period of time, yeah. It's most, I think our biggest issue when you talk about this um, working from being paid your taxes from working from home versus a company you have to look at the necessity that the company needs you in their workplace. So I think, like I said, our biggest issue for income is those persons who are laid off and they're getting unemployment. I think that's where you're going to run into your biggest issue because a lot of the jobs, you know, whether it be restaurant, nursing homes, they have a lot of criteria that they put on these people. So it's easier for them to get unemployment. 
for some of the bigger companies, like I said, I don't think we're going to have that big a problem. In fact, I think they, they may balk at the fact that they have to do the taxing from your residence. work. And more work, because it's not only the work, it's that they have a time limit. So if uh, they're a quarterly or a monthly payer, they have to get those funds to us in a timely manner or they can be penalized, which is why I think a lot of companies put a restriction on who they're going to pay. I know one company only does 20, but then there's other companies that say they're not even going to deal with it. They'll do it. They might, they might do a courtesy or they don't do anything at all. So I think that's what we're going to run into the biggest issue is that they're going to put the responsibility back on the employee because it's just too much work. Okay. Um, I guess uh, my next um, <clears throat> concern would be that at the next, the next time there is a public hearing, I'm hoping um, uh, Ms. Powdrill, uh, Mayor Mumphrey, that you all will send a letter to, um, to the committee that's hearing at the Ways and Means Committee to voice our concern. I mean, it's just like anything, any advocacy piece. We need to let them know how that will um, affect us. So I have um, asked us, um, Representative Denson, you know, to let us know when that comes up so that we can, uh, we don't have to go in person, but at least send a letter stating this is how this will affect the village of Lincoln Heights. Madam so Chair. Be on record. Yes, ma'am. Do you, um, I get the Ohio Municipal League newsletter almost on a daily basis. In fact, I get two of them sometimes. And I usually try to, I always read through them. And then if I see anything that is of interest, I usually forward it to the mayor. She knows that. Uh, mm -hmm. To the manager. Because I'm not familiar enough with it, but some of the terminology is enough for me to say, hmm, this might be some interest for us. Yeah. Ms. Peterson yeah, does a good job of, of sending it to me when she gets it. Oh, really, you should, be, you should be connected to that because it's the Ohio Municipal League. And I don't know right. why. I have tried it. several times to, um, I think her name is Zoe. And I, I don't know what's happening. Maybe they have the wrong, still using the old email that we had. There wasn't D-O-L-H, it was V-L-H-O. So I probably need to check that. But one of the issues that in talking to Representative Denson is that sometimes it, it may be last minute when they have that hearing, when they notify folks. So it won't even get to Ohio Municipal League, you know, in time to get oh. it out to us. So that's why I've asked him to, to let us know. So uh, well, they stay, I just, go ahead. I don't, I just. They, they stay pretty on top of it, um, Chair, Madam Chair. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they really get stuff out. Even if it's only going to be in a couple of days, they usually get that information yeah. out. Mayor. Yeah. So Madam Chair, maybe I can check with them and see if, if all council can get that newsletter they Thank comes you. out that way you all will get that information i can find that out tomorrow yeah i think it's really sad that we do not um and i guess it's probably a matter of um funds that, that we don't get the um the newsletter anymore the cities and villages magazine that they used to put out um that's so that was so very informative so. they send madam chair they do send them but they only send one when right. they do send it Right, but it's uh, you know we we all used to get them, so that's what I'm saying. It's probably fun. Oh, okay. So, yeah, they used to give them to all the um, council members. Madam okay, Chair. so, um, Miss um, Stevens, you have Stevenson, you have anything else? Stevens, you want you have anything else you want to add about House Bill One Fifty Seven? Mrs. Peterson. <laughs> oh, girl. Okay, I'm sorry, Miss D. <laughs> okay, I'll roll with that too. <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Uh, two things. Ms. Peterson, I believe today is your birthday. <laughs> happy oh, birthday. Well, happy birthday. Uh, one thing. Thank and you. then um, I, happy, I think birthday. happy birthday. Thank you. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Madam Chair, just one thing for the, the, the business line. I, I think it's good that we are collecting that data so that we can show the impact of our small community that financial impact. So I think it's imperative that we keep on that so that when we do go and, and be able to either speak or write a letter 
to the uh, whoever we need to, we can actually we can actually show that financial impact. So keep those numbers, um, keep them coming, keep giving that percentage. Miss D, you guys are doing a fabulous job in your department. Um, just make sure that we can keep getting that, keep highlighting it so that when it comes time to actually write a letter, we got data that goes with the letter. All right, Ms. Paltrow, do you have anything? Is, it, is this uh, additional information or what section are we in here? Do we, oh. you want to know on the topic or? Yes, whatever, because we're getting ready to go to public comments. And so I didn't know if you had anything you wanted to add. Um, I just, um, you know, again, reiterate what I said before. Now we really have to look at um, our revenue and take a closer look over the next couple of months where we're trending. Um, uh, as uh, Ms. Peterson said, you know, uh, people may be laid off. They may be, in, they may have just been incentivized to be laid off. So um, <laughs> we need to uh, really just not to be, not to joke, but we need to really start to be strategic around uh, our financial position. Um, uh, I don't have a confirmation of the amount of money we will be receiving but we definitely need to start to really talk about um, how we plan to um, utilize our funds. And I think part of our strategic plan, we did talk about um, setting aside um, a reserve. And I think this is the appropriate time that we really start to consider what does that mean and how do we calculate that on an ongoing basis as well as um, uh, for Memorial Field, as we invest all of this money into Memorial Field, how do we sustain it over the coming years? Because it's one of the uh, main assets in, in the village and we wanna make sure we take care of it um, and preserve it for the future. So um, I know everybody may have pet projects, but this might not be the time to um, throw your pet project in. We, if we can get through 2021, uh, maybe 2022 would be the year that we can look at that, um, look at those projects. And even Wi-Fi, bringing community Wi-Fi, which I think is and would be an asset to the village. Uh, uh, we're definitely going to be fundraising for that, uh, for the vast majority of that, but that will happen an ongoing expense if we want to do the things that we say we want to do in terms of expanding that. So I just uh, want a council to just to be mindful of that and um, to think through that. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Madam okay. Chair. Yes, ma'am. I did want to, I, I'm glad she, uh, Ms. Padre mentioned about uh, making some cutbacks, but I did want to talk about um, the clerk of court position. Um, as you all know, we have been having to um, go outside and get a temp service um, just to stay afloat until we can decide to find individuals. But what I, what my concern was, how can we make this position more attractive to retain individuals? Uh, one of the things that we are running against is because it does not include insurance. So I had talked with, time? yeah, and I had talked myself and I had talked with vice mayor. We are uh, concerned about that because yeah, it's important that we get someone in that position, but we want to make sure that this person make it more attractive to them so they will stay. And so um, we've had a, uh, turnover when it comes even with the temp service and even though they, uh, the way the temp service is we cannot employ them unless they have I think uh, 520 plus hours or it comes out to be three and a half months so that's that can be costly so I do know how important it is that we get this position filled but we want to make it a little bit more attractive um, 
I um, had mentioned it to Ms. Pope. And so I, I'm looking forward to see what those numbers look, what they look like. So that's why I wanted to bring that up in um, your committee. So you guys will know that we are, um, would like to consider that going forward or if we have to make appropriations for that because it's, it's it looks like it's becoming a turnover position and it's really a nice position, but we need to be realistic. We want someone to stay. We don't want someone because it is time consuming. It's a strain on the administrative side with Ms. Um, Rita and uh, with Ms. Randolph, um, which they're doing, uh, Ms. Randolph has started cross-training for that position. But um, as you all know, um, we don't want to get behind on the other duties that she has. So I just so wanted to, to point that out. So one of my questions would be, and, and Ms. Pope, I guess you need to weigh in on this as well. So in our appropriation, we appropriated all the salaries um, to the top is to the top level for 2021 correct we went to the top level not knowing what people would get in terms of um a raises so can we begin to look at that or when will we have um the evaluations done so that we know whether and or not, what, you know, how much money we have because with the salaries, potential salaries being at the top level, that included the insurance being at that level too. So actually there are some funds there that could be considered um, to add to um, that particular position. Is that not correct? Is that, is that possible? Is that yeah. how we would begin to look at that? Well, especially when you're talking about the P, if you make the person P um, full-time, they don't have to pay, well, part-time or full-time, they pay into PERS. The PERS is 10% of your gross salary. So it would depend on how much she made, he or she made, um, um, that determines how much we would pay into PERS based off- Right, but I'm saying, but right now we have really some extra money Mm -hmm. built into we've padded the budget this year so right. can we look at what that padding is to see how we can apply it to that position to see what you come up with i mean it doesn't mean that you pay it at the top level you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so that right. we can at least begin to get somebody in there if you say that you know the the benefits is what would make it more attractive I'm looking up Perhaps now. that is something you all can work on, then bring it to the um, to the committee so that we can. Okay. And you're okay. really trying to get somebody before before the third money in April, right? Right. So I mean, yeah. you have to have a special meeting, or you want to bring it up in in a regular council meeting, but that's something that bears, you know, exploring. Okay. All right. Um, because I do know, even when um, what Ms. Peterson, you know, um, when April comes and we possibly will have individuals in in mayor's court for taxes, that's going to have some additional hours for that clerk of court. I know um, I'm not sure how they're going to how we're going to split up court costs along with tax prep. You know uh, what they owe the village for is their taxes. So um, there's some more conversation that we need to have, but I'm looking forward to bringing some information back uh, to council. Um, I can always include it in that maybe um, Monday's council meeting and we'll be able to talk about a little bit further. Okay. All right, is there anything else that, um, that needs to be brought up? If not, then we will open the floor to our public comments. Um, I see uh, Ms. Lee, who is on the Lincoln Heights Day Committee, has uh, is there. Ms. Lee, did you have something you wanted to address with us? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
All right. If there, is there anything else for the good of your order? I'd like to ask Ms. Uh, Lee a question, if you don't mind. Sure. Mr. Lee, did you receive the information? Yes, ma'am, I did. Yes, thank you. Okay. That's it. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Daniels? Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mr. Daniels, do you have anything for the committee or any comments? Well, good meeting. Thank you. I like to, and I just like to break down this folk to work. Thank you. Ms. Baber? Um, no, Madam Chair, thank you. You're, we you're welcome. Ms. Pope? Yes, you uh, to answer Mrs. Key's question, the 49492 and 9, well, 91 and 92, those were the two duplicate checks. So those check numbers were used in 20. So that's why they're not on the report. And that's what caused the whole crazy system. You mean they were used for, they were actually written? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, and that, were they written out of sequence or? No, so, so what happens is when I put in a check number, well, my system, when I get ready to print che checks, It'll say, what's your uh, pr uh, check number? So if I say 49492 and it has already been used, then it'll say uh, it won't let me use that range. So that range, it could be the beginning. Like I think that duplicate number started at 49470. But the amount of checks that I was writing included that 49491 and 92. So it wouldn't let me use those checks because okay. of, maybe I was printing out 30 checks or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Got you. All right. If there is nothing else, then, oh, I see that there's um, Curtis D. Did you um, have anything you'd like to say for public comments? That's Ms. Peterson. Oh, oh, okay. Curtis and D. Got you. <laughs> All right, if there's nothing else for the good of the order, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And properly moved and second. Any questions on the motion? There are no questions on the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Uh, Mayor Mumphrey, I need you to call me. Good meeting, Ms. Mitchell. Great good meeting. Another month of good meeting. Thank you. Great meeting. Good Thank you. meeting. Thank you. Following you now. Oh, okay. I guess I better turn my phone on so I can hear it. Okay. <laughs> All right, good night. Good night. <laughs>